Welcome to Networking Rx, a podcast devoted to helping business professionals like you enhance your networking skills in order to become more proficient giving and receiving quality business referrals and improving the overall quality of your life and the lives of those around you. The Networking Rx podcast is a production of AmSpirit Business Connections, an organization whose mission is to empower business success through networking. Welcome to the Networking Rx podcast. I'm your host, Frank Egan, founder and president of AmSpirit Business Connections. Today, we have another great guest on. As our ongoing subscribers know, often on this podcast, I will share ideas and insights and best practices for building professional relations and then how to excel with business networking. Uh, Occasionally, however, I'll be interviewing subject matter experts, authors, speakers, thought leaders, social scientists, people who have great experience with dealing with relationships. And then these these I'll get these people to share their knowledge and can kind of help us navigate that. Uh, Today we have on the program Joel Goldberg. Now, if that name sounds familiar, you're you're not going crazy because uh, two weeks ago uh, we had him on the expedition networking podcast and that's the program where we get business professionals to share about their journey so if you listen to it came out uh, february 11th if you listen to episode 262 you will hear joel's full story of how he uh, all the things he does and how he got to that point in time and how networking relationships helped him Uh, but just to recap uh, joel has been a television broadcaster for 26 years the last 13, he has been with the Kansas City Royals. He's also a corporate speaker, a podcast host, and the author of the book, Small Ball, Big Results. Joel, welcome to the program. Frank, good to be back with you. It's like I just saw you, and here we are again. Yeah. I don't know know. if you were desperate or not or what, but no, it's good to be back (laughs) with you again. No, this is, you know, it's, you know, the first one was great. Um, I really kind of want to get into the relationship aspects, because for most of us, you know, we deal, we have these corporate lives and we get into corporations and we develop relationships and they kind of stick. Um, you know, I, I look back to where I worked in, in the corporate world and the guy who was the managing partner is still the managing partner, you know, so mm-hmm. you build a relationship, it gets better and better every year. In your world, it can change on a dime, maybe not ownership, but management, certainly players. Um, mm-hmm. I guess I want to explore how you build relationships with the various, the, the various, when I say players, I don't mean players as in ball players, but in the stakeholders, you've got management, you've got players, you've got other broadcasters. How do you do those? Are they different? You know, there are to me similarities and differences in all of them beyond the obvious of different personalities, which is a huge part of it. We all know that you, you can't, you can treat everyone the same, but you can't push everyone's buttons the same because we're all wired a little bit differently. I think that's true whether you have the highest level CEO, whether you have the sales rep, whether you have the star of the team, whether you have the role player, whether you have the owner, the GM, whatever it is. I mean, we we all are wired a little bit differently. And the more you get to know someone, the more you can connect with them and understand how their boundaries work and hopefully vice versa. It it all comes down to trust. I don't care what the profession. It also all comes down, and I'm being a little bit general here, to really, and I guess it's the empathy side of it, really trying to walk in someone else's shoes. And what I mean by that is uh, I think I know what the athlete's routine is every day, but do I really know everything they're going through? in the same way that they may not know what it takes to put together a television show. So they may only see me when I'm walking into the locker room or walking onto the field for batting practice and have no idea the research, the prep work, the phone calls and all that stuff in the same way that I don't understand how much time they're going to go on the training table and sit in the hot tub and, uh, you know, the work with a strength and conditioning coach, anything that I don't see behind the scenes. That is true for the executive who maybe doesn't call you back right away. And before you sit there and think he's not interested, wonder about the fires he's putting out or wonder about this person. And she's busy in this meeting and that meeting. And, and, you know, so, I mean, I think the more you can understand someone, their life and what they're going through, the better chance you have of connecting and building those relationships. And that, that 
no one hands out a card saying what what that looks like. You have to learn and be inquisitive and understand. Yeah, it's. A, I mean, that's so true. We have to. Every situation is different. Every day is different. Even from one day to the next, dealing with somebody is different, and you have to learn to be able to read people. Yeah. Have you ever had situations gone bad where you just not bad, but just you get your wires crossed or? Um, trying to think of the word for it you know what i'm saying it's just oh okay. no, sure i mean first off in this day and age we're living in i feel like it happens in some form or another to me hopefully not once a day at least once a week where there's a mix-up with a zoom call or a misunderstanding with this or that and, and that can happen i mean you know in the in the sports world we are generally relying on a middleman, so to speak so someone in the media relations department that is going to help set those things up I believe I've built a good enough reputation with those players that I don't always need that. But at the same time, we're talking about those are the people that are going to be the biggest advocates for me of, of, of trying to get people where they're supposed to be. And, and look, they sometimes can serve as a buffer if the guy doesn't want to do something. And so, you know, there's protocol involved in that. But I also find, and I don't ever want to go around that because I, I work with amazing people, that if I can – get the message directly to the person, not so much the ask, but just a heads up. Hey, I'm, I'm thinking about working on this. I want to go through the right channels, but just give you an idea. The more you can help connect those dots, the less of those wires being crossed happen, but it does happen. And I, I would look at from an athlete standpoint. And I think for, you know, anyone that's listening to the podcast, think about it. And I'm, I'm grossly over generalizing here, but Think about it in terms of, say, the generation gaps. And if you if you don't quite understand uh, a millennial or someone in Gen Z, like, those guys are never fill in the blank, which I hate when people do that. And I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a, a Gen Xer and I feel like that's getting us closer to baby boomers every day. I don't know. Like I, you know, I'm, I'm getting further and further away from the younger crowd, but I feel like I have to better understand them, too. And so they may say yes but then the wires get crossed and they're not there. Well, did it mean they didn't care? No, not necessarily. And so we need to, to not take those things so personally, but sometimes again, getting back to understanding what people go through, it might've been, yeah, sure. I'll do that. And we're all set up and we've committed all these resources, but then they get pulled into a meeting or they get pulled into a workout or, or whatever it is. And so, so I think the wires get crossed all the time. The way to, uncross those wires especially if we're dealing with people that are a little different than us based on background age or whatever it is is just to over communicate and to be able to have those lines of communication but you know the wires cross that's going to happen every day in some form or another yeah i, I mean I, I can see that so mainly you're a lot of what you're doing is you're dealing with the the team's media relations people and and yeah. scheduling stuff yeah but you, you know I also find, and, and this would be true, by the way, in any office, if, if I reach out to the assistant of some big time CEO and say, hey, I would love to schedule a meeting with, you know, I'm going to be lucky if I even get a reply. Or if I happen to be involved in some big event and I'm moderating something, and then maybe I want to leverage that into getting that uh, big speaker as a guest on my podcast. And I reach out to the assistant and they may or may not reply back or they may say, yeah, well, he's kind of busy. We'll, work out. well, I need to find a way to empower is probably not the right word, but I need to find a way for that CEO, that executive, that star player to want to say yes to the assistant. And if I can't get through the gatekeeper, the media relations person, the assistant, whoever it is, then I think that's on me. I mean, that, that gatekeeper is there to protect those people. Why? Right. Because their, their time is in such high demand. That again leads to something. And I talk about this a lot, Frank, that if you're asking for five minutes of someone's time and they're a high demand in high demand person or anyone for that matter, don't turn five minutes into 20. Right. It might happen every now and then, but, but suddenly a reputation is built. So when the athletes, and I like to say this all the time, when I walk into a locker room or in baseball, we typically call it a clubhouse. 
and I'm there every single day in a non-COVID year. When I walk in, I don't want guys walking the other way. And you, you get to that point by building a reputation. He, he means what he says. He's going to be where he's supposed to be when he's supposed to be there. He's going to take this long. So when I say, and I typically need 30 seconds to a minute soundbite. Uh, if it's a one-on-one one interview, maybe five minutes. If I say, hey, I only have two questions, I'm not going to ask 10. Right. The challenge for that is being the guy that's around the most. If it's a day where a lot of the media is showing up from around town, the local TV stations and, and all that, and they're not there on an everyday basis, but maybe the here in Kansas City, the Chiefs aren't playing that day, or there's no practice, and there's nothing else going on, and there's no breaking news or weather or whatever, and they send everybody. Sometimes they send them without a reporter. And so what happens when I go walk up to get that sound bite? All the crowd follows me. Well, I ask my one question, which I need for the show, and I move on, and now this thing turns into 10 minutes later. Gotcha. And so – that's where I need to read the room. You talk about reading the room and say, walk up to that guy and say, Hey, listen, um, I need 30 seconds of your time. You also got a bunch of people back there that, and I'll, I'll, I'll grab the microphone. I'll hand it to my cameraman. I'll say, Hey, hang tight for a second. I gotta go talk to him. Cause the second I walk over with the microphone, the crowd might follow. Hey, um, you got a bunch of other people here. I don't know how busy you are. I only need 30 seconds, but I also know if I do this right now, it could turn into five minutes. Is that okay? What works for you? What doesn't? Um, because the, the media relations might not set up little things like that, but I know that my reputation is on the line, even if that could get tarnished is the wrong word there too. But even if my word could change based on everybody else in the room. So I'm very, very deliberate about the way I go about things because I think that that reputation in the long run, and this is true of walking into any business or getting through those gatekeepers, you build those relationships on trust and authenticity. I have a number of questions coming off of that. Um, quick question. Do agents ever get in the way? Agents say, hey, just leave my player alone. Uh, um, kind of usurp what the, the media relation people are saying. It'll almost never happen within the setting of a locker room or a clubhouse or, or a game day setting. Uh, I, I think really the only time you're going to get agents involved is when you're dealing with free agency, offseason stuff. Uh, and that can go both ways, by the way. They may not want to talk to anyone. They also may want to talk to you because they know that getting that messaging out there, at that point, you become a little bit more of a pawn. I'm not as involved in that end of things. And so I don't need the agents as much. I will say that getting the families involved is always a good thing. You talk about building trust, too. And that, that, that might not be as appropriate or apply as much in the corporate world, other than just to say that when you can. When, when you have family members, people that they trust because they have a lifetime's worth of trust vouching for you, hey, this guy's treating you well. Hey, that guy asked fair questions. And now you have some people in your corner advocating for you. That helps too. But I don't have to deal a whole lot with the agents, which which certainly helps me. Okay. I guess the, the other thing you'd mentioned a couple of times and we uh, haven't really touched on it, COVID. How has that changed just your day-to-day interaction? If Well, I'm sure it has. It's to me the same as what everybody's dealing with. In the end, we're all trying to figure out ways to continue those relationships, to sustain those relationships, to build those relationships and do it just as you and I are doing via a virtual call. And is that perfect? No, but is it doable? Absolutely. Yes. So I think then you have a choice to make, and this was true for me this past baseball season. Uh, when we got back in, in the third week or so of July, it was July 24th. And we went through the end of September uh, of last year was in the simplest forms. I like to say the show goes on. I mean, for a while, the show, there was no show, but once it went on, we had a job to do one way or another. So to give you a quick example on that, my access was limited to zoom calls and, and then maybe text messages and things like that. So any player that I wanted outside of one-on-one interviews that we might do for our our baseball pregame show, which I was doing before I went into the stadium. So I was doing that in my spare bedroom out of the house with my broadcast partner. And we get a guy on from the stadium and we do the interview. That was easy. But as far as the press conferences and player availability, I was getting, 
basically the same thing that any news outlet could get. So I had lost my ability to be the one that was there. I mean, as a guy that travels with the team in normal years, I had access and availability with players that, that really a couple beat writers and myself are the only ones to get in our broadcast team. Suddenly that went away, but it didn't have to because that's to me where, and I would say this to anyone in any profession, you want to have to start to leverage hopefully the trust and relationships you've built over the years. I mean, you talk, Frank, about players come and go, but enough of them are around long enough to build that relationship and also let others around them know, hey, he's okay, so that you could open those doors. So I just had to find different ways to push those buttons and do it in a way, getting back to the wanting to walk into the room and not have others run away, in a way where I couldn't see the reaction on them. So what it would be was maybe me sending out a text. First off, it was me going to the media relations head, uh, vice president who's been around and is forever and is known as one of the best in the game and saying, what's the line here? I don't want to call you every single time I need a quick two minute story from someone, right. but I will, if that's what you want, what is best. And, and what he said back to me is I'll set up the big stuff. Go ahead. You're on your own. Don't overstep bounds. Don't drive people crazy, which I said, well, I already knew that. I appreciate it. So I might send out a text to a guy. Hey, I got a question. What's a good time. Cause I couldn't look and see when what's a good time to connect. Do you have five minutes at some point? Hey, I want to ask you about this. I want to ask you about that. And then I started trying to leverage, hey, I don't want to bug you too much, but I do want to dig into some things. Would you mind sharing your, your dad's number or your mom's number or whoever, your coach's number from high school? I'd love to pick the brain. And what I found, Frank, was that suddenly people that family members that couldn't go to the games, they, they weren't able to be there in person um, to see debuts or to see big moments hearing from me and sharing some of these stories and then watching them on the TV broadcast brought them closer. So I actually was getting messages back from players late at night saying, Hey, thanks so much for talking about my dad that made his night. And so I, I bring that up because what seemed like an impossible task and some days it felt like it actually had some openings and, and possibilities to, to really take a step forward, even though it was more challenging than usual. I mean, that's a neat story. I think a lot of, not a lot of people, some people in this COVID world have kind of got stuck into, into the mentality, I can't do my job as I've always done it. And you're basically saying, you know what, I got to find a way. Um, well, because here's the, here's the thing to me. I, I think if you were to finish that sentence, and a lot of people feel that way, and we've all had moments like that too. If the thought process is, I can't do my job because of COVID, and if that's the end of the statement, then you're done. Right. Like yeah. then you're saying that you're going to wait till this is over. So does that mean to tell me that you're going to put your business, your profession, your life on hold for over a year? Or are you sitting there saying, okay, I can't do my job. And here's the, here are the keywords after I can't do my job the same way. Because if you add that in there, then the next sentence is so what can I do differently? Right. Because here's the thing. There are enough. I don't care the profession. There are enough people out there that will say, well, let me just wait till this is better or let me go find something else to do. So I think there's this unbelievable opening and opportunity for all of us right now. If we're willing to pursue different avenues. We may not like them as much. Uh, we may feel uncomfortable with it. But you know what? After a while, it didn't feel uncomfortable before. I wish we could have gone back to the old days. But it worked. And right. in the end, what was I here to do? I was here to broadcast these games or these stories. I'm a storyteller and bring people closer to the players. And I think I was able to do that, even if it took a little bit more effort or a different path. Well, and the reality is everybody's every, no pun intended or um, everybody's playing on a level playing field, meaning other people in your profession yes. have, you know, they're not having more access or better access than you. You're all dealing with the same facts and circumstances. You, I guess the last touch point, um, and you kind of mentioned it, these players are coming and going and you, you kind of indicated there's a carryover of credibility or reputation. Is that something you ask for? Is that something that just happens or is it a combination or is it just the new players kind of seeing the old player interacting with you and saying, Hey, I see they have a good relationship. He, He's trustworthy. Yes. And 
you know, I, I never thought I'd play this card, but I, you know, I've been doing this long enough now that, you know, 13 years with the Royals that at some point, I guess you sort of play like the old guy card. Yeah. You know, the guy that's been around a long time. Now, if you're going to play that card, you still need to be able to stay relevant, you know, back to sort of the generations. Can I still, can I react and can I relate? You know, I just had a guy named Alex Gordon that retired at the end of last season. And, you know, he's an old guy now and he's 36. Uh, but when he broke in, he was 23 and, and, you know, I was like 35 or 36. So I was able to relate to him then, but relating to him now, He's got three kids and, you know, his oldest is five years younger than my youngest. So I need to now figure out ways to still be able to stay relevant to the 22 and 23 year olds breaking in. However, those 22 and 23 year olds are looking up to the 28 and the 30 year olds. And those are the ones I've built relationships with. So what I will very um, deliberately do is at least in person, And I still was able to do that last year in spring training a a little over about a year ago or so from from now. Um, So last February is you walk up to the new guys. My strategy always is if I can do it with a player that's been around a while in the area, then I can immediately have somebody vouch for me. Right. You know, they come, they see people come and go every single day. So I'm especially if there's a language barrier. So I might walk up to the new guy and say, hey, I want to introduce myself. You know, I'm Joel. I travel with the team. I host the pre- and post-game show. Uh, I'm going to drive you nuts. I'm going to try not to drive you nuts every day, but, you know, I will at some point. He'll, he'll tell you what a pain I am. And the guy will let, no, no, he's fine. He's good. You know, and it just starts that kind of that, that back and forth, taking shots at each other, giving each other a hard time. And I'll try to make fun of myself. Hey, I'm the old guy around here. Um, I've been here since you were in diapers, but I just wanted to let you know, he'll, he'll, he'll vouch for me or he'll tell you what a pain I am or or whatever it is. Right. And it always just kind of gets things started the right way. I I think you're never, ever, ever done building relationships. It it takes practice every day. And I, I know we're wrapping up, but there are players still on a regular basis now that I shoot text messages to that have not been with the Royals for two years, three years, five years. And they don't need to hear from me. I probably don't need to be heard from. But if a guy gets engaged, if a guy wins an award, if a guy gets seriously hurt, I'll just shoot a text saying, hey, thinking about you or congratulations or whatever it is. Because you never know when that's going to come back. Or uh, that player maybe never comes back here. But one of his teammates does. And I shoot them a message and I say, hey, what do you know about this guy? Oh, he's best friends with him. Well, well, hey, tell him I'm not such a bad guy. You just never know where things are going to lead. And so, you know, I was taught that at a young age and nobody teaches relationships in school. I don't think so. I don't think they no. I don't know that they teach them in the business school. They didn't teach them in journalism school. No. I think it probably should have been tops on the list. They taught you how to write. They taught you how to talk. Uh, they taught you how to, to, to produce and put stories together, but they didn't teach you relationships. But a TV guy once told me, and I don't remember how I met him, but he was a TV guy in Chicago, and I'd watched him on TV, and somebody knew him and connected us, and he said, make sure to pay attention to the sales guys, the advertising guys. E- everybody in every, every other profession, uh, aspect of television, even if you don't have an interest in that, because you never know when they can help you out, and you never know when they can help you out, or when you can help them out. Right. No, those are all great points. I really appreciate your time before and today. So this has been great. Um, uh, Everybody, Joel Goldberg, uh, thanks for your time. Great. Thanks. Enjoyed it again. Thanks for joining us on the Networking Rx podcast. Please put what you've learned into action today and let us know if you have questions, comments, or ideas for future topics. You can email them to us at podcast at amspirit.com. That's A-M-S-P-I-R-I-T dot com. Finally, so you never miss an episode, be sure to subscribe to the Networking Rx podcast through iTunes, Overcast, or however you receive your podcasts. Now get out and network with someone. The Networking Rx podcast is the copyright production of Amspirit Business Connection. All rights reserved.